Day 98, we're going to look at web automation by timing something to send an email. So firstly, let me put my hands up and say that if you build this in the free version of Replit, you're probably not going to get the results you're looking for. The way a REPL works is that if you are on the free account, after a certain amount of time, a REPL will fall asleep and stop working. You can get around that by either paying for the hacker plan or buying cycles to enable always on in your REPL. To do that, once you've got your cycles or your hacker plan, click on the name slug and come and tick this always on button. This will make sure that your REPL is always awake and if it does fall asleep, it'll wake it back up. And this is really important because what we need to do is be able to have a REPL that's always running so we can keep track of time and do certain jobs at certain points. Let's start by seeing how the scheduling system works. It's reasonably straightforward. We need to import schedule Install it from the package manager then. And we're going to create a subroutine that's going to happen, let's say, every couple of seconds. We'll just print out a clock. So this is quite a long function. We need to schedule dot every, and then in brackets, an amount of time. In this case, I'm going to say two dot seconds dot do. And in the brackets for do, we tell it what we want to, to happen. So we want it to print me. And just like when we used to Kinter all the way back when, we don't actually put brackets on this subroutine call. Now, what this is going to do is set up the schedule so that every two seconds, it's going to call the subroutine and run it, which is nice. So I've created the schedule and I've told it that every two seconds, I want it to run the print me function. But if I run it here, nothing's going to happen. And the REPL ran and stopped. We need some kind of loop to keep it constantly checking the schedule. So let's use one of our old favorites, while true. All we need to do is do schedule dot run underscore pending. Now what that's going to do is it's going to keep checking to see if anything in our schedule needs to be run. And if it does, we'll run it. So you can see now that every two seconds we're getting a clock printing out. But there is one little issue with that. Take a look at our CPU indicator. We're using half of our CPU for this. This seems crazy, but if you think about what I've built here, it'll make a bit more sense. A while true loop happens more than once a second. So hundreds of thousands, if not millions of times a second, our program is going, is the schedule ready yet? Is it time to go? Shall we, shall we get this code working? And because of that, we are using a lot of CPU to keep checking that. A little hack for this to make it run better is to also bring in time. Now, because normally you're going to be running schedules in hours, minutes or seconds, and a second is usually the smallest increment we care about. We're going to add a little time dot sleep just for a single second there. And when we run it, we're not going to see a difference in the output because it is checking every second now. But notice that CPU has gone down from 50% usage to 0.7% usage. So we've made a massive difference to the efficiency of this code just by thinking about it a bit more logically. Well, that's cool, but what if we wanted something to happen every few minutes? Now it'll call the subroutine every few minutes. What about hours? So every two hours now, it's gonna call the subroutine, which is great. But what are we gonna do every single hour as a subroutine. Well, maybe what we could do is every hour send ourselves a message to remind ourselves to take a little break. It's good for RSI, it's good for the health when using a computer to take a little break, but most people get into flow and struggle. So let's send an email to go out every hour just to remind you to take a few minutes break, stretch your legs, change the focal distance of your eyes and that sort of thing. How does email work? Well, first of all, you are going to need your own email account. It's been a long time since we could just tell a computer program to mail and it did it. And even then, on some standalone systems, we can still do that. But the mail normally gets lost in the spam because if you think about it, being able to set up a mailing program that doesn't require an email address is a hotbed for spammers. So we do need our details for our email account. I'm going to use my Gmail account for this and generate a one-time password. If you're using a different mail provider, you'll be able to use your own username and password probably by default. Gmail is just a little bit more secure. I'm going to go to security 
and I'm going to generate an app password. Now it'll ask you to verify. And what we need to do is create a new password. The reason this works is because Gmail uses different authentication. It doesn't like to store a username and password in plain text. By doing it this way, if your username and password leak, you can just turn it off in the app. So I'm going to make a mail app and I'm going to say other and I'm going to say replit and click generate. What you'll be given is an app password, that there. I'm going to copy it. I'll delete this when I'm done so you can't steal mine. And back in our REPL, I'm going to bring up our secrets and I'm going to add mail password to that. And mail username is going to be your email address. I'm going to bring my secrets to the left and I'm going to bring in OS so my secrets will work. And I'm going to bring those into the program now. Password, username. So now I can use those to bring in the mail. So how does the mail function actually work? We're going to add a new library, which is SMTP lib, which allows us to talk to email servers. And we're going to start building up our email. I'm going to write a subroutine to send us an email now. Your email can be plain text if you like, or it can be HTML. I'm going to stick with plain text to start with. We're going to need some variables. The server is going to be smtp.gmail.com and the port is going to be 587. These may change. Do check Gmail's help section if this part doesn't work. We're then going to create the connection to the server. I'm going to call it S because we've been referring to it a few times. smtplib.smtp host equals server port equals port. That will connect to the server. We do et.start tls, which is the encryption mode we need, and then s.login with username and password. This should log into the email server for us. We then need to build a message itself, and that means importing another library. From email mime multipart, we're going to import mime multipart. So we also need to bring in our mime text format. So to create the message, this line creates the message. The next thing we need to do is add the contents and the to and the from fields. These work like dictionaries. In the to fields, we're going to type the name of our recipient. In the from field, we're going to send our own email address. In subject, you're going to, you're going to set the subject line. So to attach the email, what we need to do is attach the mime format. We attach it as HTML and then send the message. We're then going to send it and then delete it. Let's run that and see if that works. Let's call it first. So I'm just going to unindent here and call it there. And there you'll see an email from me telling me to take a break. So the automated emails are working. Let's send that now every hour. So instead of just sending it here, I'm going to change it from print me, printing out, sending reminder, and then send mail in there. We now will send an email every hour. And if you've got always on, this will work all day, every day, forever. Why don't you try combining both together? Common problems. There's a lot that can go wrong when you're setting up your email. First of all, the email part always has to work like this. We need all these imports and we need all this setup as well. If you don't construct your email message using these lines, it won't let you send it and it will shout at you for trying to do so. An email is a very specific thing, so it needs to be set up in a very specific way. You may also find that your host or server changes, wherein these lines will shout at you. Maybe your username and password have been revoked they need to be updated as secrets. They will shout at you. There's a lot that can go wrong with sending an email and it's mostly server side. If you see error codes, check the line. If it's anything to do with line 12, it's something wrong with the host and the port. If it's anything wrong with line 14, you need to change the username and password. If it's anything wrong with 20 or 22, it's about constructing the message in the first place, which is where you need to check everything's working there. 
Aside from that, the only other common problem is writing the singular time on line 29. If you write one hour, which reads better, then you are going to get a crash. This is particularly important with seconds. One second will crash, whereas five seconds won't. I've broken some code, so won't you go and fix it for me, please? Like now, don't wait, don't schedule it, do it now. Your challenge today then, what I'd like you to do is I've given you a text file, which is a list full of impressive quotes. What I'd like you to do is email yourself once a day with one of those quotes at random to gear yourself up for the more. When you're done, share your code with us by publishing it in the community and use the hashtag replit 100 days of code so we can find it on social media. Tomorrow, we're going to look at combining this with scraping and build a bot that actually checks websites to see if anything's changed.